Right, so this is floral foam. Now it's often called Oasis because it has this amazing ability to hold water and suck water up. Now I've got it in this tray and if I add water we'll see that water rise up the Oasis. Actually by an incredible amount. Now things will do that, any small tubes are going to do that, they'll lift the water up and that's called capillary action which raises the water above the original water level. So after a few minutes it will have drawn the water up into the floral foam. Now, but the water has been pulled up a good three centimetres and the same kind of thing will happen in paint brushes, it'll happen in household bricks and it happens in trees. And the capillary action that's doing this is thought to be part of the um, attraction of intermolecular forces and the adhesion that the water has to the sides of the tube it's travelling up because this is as if it were made of lots of little tiny tubes. The reason it's so good for flowers is it mimics um, plant cells. Anything that has that porous structure is going to do exactly the same thing. If I leave a house brick for an hour in a pool of water, it, that capillary action will pull the water into the house brick, something like three quarters of the house brick. Capillary action is dependent on the diameter of the tube that is trying to draw it up. So if you've got a two meter long tube, you get something like 0 0.0007 millimeters of movement. If you've got something like a 0.2 millimeter tube, it'll pull it up seven, uh, seven centimeters or 70 millimeters. And this is about halfway of that, it's about 30 millimeters. So the little network structure in there, chances are it's about 0.4 of a millimeter. Okay, that's absolutely fascinating, but not a lot of use. However, watch what happens when I turn a stream of air on it. then the water rises up from the foam very much higher and very much more quickly because it's gone from there and from to there in the few seconds that I had that stream of air on. And that is called water transpiration. Because what happens is instead of the water just drying, which is you kind of expect it to do and that water level shrinking, what we do is we create an area of lower water vapour pressure and the water underneath it rises up to fill that lower pressure and drags the rest of the water up with it and that's how trees actually work because although capillary action is pretty cool you've got to have a really really narrow tube to get it a few centimetres up there and of course trees are tens if not <laughs> metres tall and it's a long way to transplant that water by capillary action. But that effect of the water drying and creating a lower water vapor pressure, if you like, sucks the water up pretty much like a sponge. So the combination of capillary action and water transpiration is why trees are able to pump water all the way up from the ground to the top of their canopy. There's a leaf itself has little openings in it called stomata. The water evaporates from those openings because of the sun. That creates a low water vapor pressure in the leaf, which passes its way all the way down the tree trunk and sucks the water up. So water transpiration, which is solar driven and capillary action, are the way that water is drawn up through trees. Now all of that is really fascinating, but what's the use of it? Well, it <laughs> helps trees live, so that's pretty useful. But what I mean is, can we use it in another way. Okay, so I've stuck it in the sun. It is nowhere near as warm today. It's only 29 degrees centigrade. But you can see that we've got a six degree difference here. And that's because when the sun hits this black, of course it absorbs the sunlight, it gets warm, the water evaporates. As the water evaporates, then the oasis foam is pumping it from this water reservoir. Then that water reservoir is continually feeding it. And so we're getting a cooling effect, even though we're applying direct heat.
So by making our artificial tree in this bit of oasis with this bit of black cloth, we were able to get a considerable drop in temperature. Now I only used oasis because it's easy to see what's going on, but there are materials far better than an oasis. So for instance, chromatography paper will wick that water up tremendously. To get that cooling effect, all we did was leave it in the sun and the wind. If we forced air over that and we increased the amount it ev evaporated by, of course, that cooling difference would be much greater. We'd get a much cooler temperature out of it. Now, the best of the coolers that I've ever seen in swamp coolers are basically uh, a bucket with holes in and then there's a, a felt on the inside, a pump dribbles water from the top, a fan forces air through. They're really excellent, with the only problem being they're using a pump. Here we can get rid of that pump altogether and of course that means that the energy cost involved in running such a thing can be halved just by choosing a suitable material that can do the same thing that a tree does. Oasis does it, paper does it, household bricks will do it. So a whole load of material can be used to create a swamp cooler without actually using a pump. And that for me, that's very exciting, particularly because in order to get there, we've just mimicked nature. Anyway, <laughs> hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. And please do remember to like and subscribe.